All right, welcome everyone. It's June 2nd, 2023, the start of phase one. Uh, this is GitLab, GitLab plugin modernization. So topics we had, um, a previous action item, Harsh creating a, a unified modeling language diagram of the webhook with help from Freyam. Uh, Chris, to check if the GitHub action added by Basel is working as expected. Chris, I think that one's done. Yeah. Yeah, as far as I could tell, it's been done. And then Harsh create a snapshot of version 6.x to publish in Artifactory. Harsh, you want to report on either of those two action items? Um, like the, the UML diagram thing, we had uh, I had a meeting with Freyam and we decided on some things and I was I was going to work on it, but then the review got messy and like the PR got messy and I, and I am totally focused on that right now. Like I, I'm going to shift it next next week and regarding the snapshot version, uh, it's also going to be next week. Like my focus is going to be that PR. As soon uh, as soon as it get as soon as it gets merged, then I'll start working on the webhook thing. So Good. we'll discuss about that uh, that review that that Basil did. That 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 was a great review. That was that that was an eye opener. Great, thank you. Well, and and I like I like the focus on the code. Good for you. That that's that's good choice. All right. So so then, do we want to put an agenda topic that is discussion on the on the review and its results? Yeah. Okay. Are there any specific topics that, that are on your mind, uh, Harsh, in terms of hey, I'd like to ask about this or ask about that? Yeah, related to the auto detection thing, like Basil said to keep it, uh, like keep the thing alive, like, and I don't have any problem with that, but uh, I was trying to understand the auto detection thing. And I had some questions related to it, like, why are we iterating through all the API versions? Well, when we know that if the user is not using, like the, if the user is not specifying whether to use version three or version four, then we can already use the version four for the user. like. Why are we iterating to all the API versions and then checking if it's working or not? Like, isn't it useless kind of feature? No, the reason that it's iterating is if you're using a very old version of GitLab that does not support the newer API, it's designed so that you could use that older version without having to explicitly configure Jenkins to talk to it with an older API. Ooh. So I think, um, let me give you a specific example. Um, for GitLab uh, v4, it was, uh, I'm just looking up the um, API history. Um, yeah, so the uh, the GitLab API v3 was introduced sometime around 2017. Um, and okay, I can't, I can't find the version that it was introduced in, but, um, or the version that, V4 was introduced in, but the, the idea was at some point in time, there would have been a GitLab release that only supported V3 API and not the V4 API. It would have been an old version at that time, but not old enough that we wouldn't want Jenkins users to be using it, uh, or that we wouldn't want to support Jenkins users who were using it. Um, and, and so in that case, um, that's what this auto detection feature is designed for us because without the auto detection, um, if we tried to connect using the latest API version that we know how to speak, uh, that might be too new for an older GitLab server. Um, so the idea was that it would, it would gracefully uh, fall back to an older API version until it found one that both sides can speak. I mean, this is the same kind of auto negotiation that Ethernet does. Like when you plug in uh, an Ethernet cable, uh, you know it tries to uh, like I have a, I have a 100 I have a gigabit Ethernet switch, and you know if you plug in, uh, you know if you if you plug in uh, an Ethernet cable, it'll it'll do this auto negotiation where it tr it, it attempts to determine uh, what speed both sides of the Ethernet connection can communicate at, and and chooses the the lowest common denominator. Um, so it's, it's the same exact type of protocol here, um, and you know that that would be useful in the future if they introduced API version five, 
Um, so we, we, you'd imagine that there would be still a lot of GitLab servers that only can speak version four. Um, so that's that's kind of why I think we should keep this feature because, and I, I did look up whether they were ever going to have a version five, and I did see some discussion about yeah. it, although it doesn't seem to be released yet. But um, it's yeah, it seems like they are potentially going to have a version five in the future. So did that, did that answer your question? Yeah, so the whole crux is Jenkins and GitLab both should support, like the Jenkins instance and the GitLab instance used by the users, both should support the version, the API version that we are trying to use. And that's yeah. why we are iterating through all the API versions and seeing if both of them match. That's right. Right, right. Yeah, if, if we're yeah, if we try to talk to the server using a language that's too new for it to speak, you know, it'll just reject the request. And that that auto detection code is just looping around until it finds an acceptable version. Okay. And now the, the the next question that I had was for the ordinal thing. So, like I saw that the client builders were already sorted, and the ordin what the ordinal thing was uh, trying to do was it was trying to see whether the ordinal values are different or not, and also trying to compare the client builder IDs. So I couldn't really understand because the ordinal values are always going to be different. Like for version, like for auto detection, it's going to be zero for auto, uh, for version three and version four, it's going to be one and two respectively. So they are always the ordinal value will always have a difference. Like if the difference is non-zero, then it will only uh, it will only compare on the basis of IDs like uh, version three or version four. So it's never going to use the ordinal thing. I couldn't really understand what was that for. Yeah, I mean, I, I I don't I don't know how good the original code was, but what I what I imagine the intention was is to be able to, to simply sort the list in some kind of order because it implements it was, some it kind was, of. Yeah, it is already sorted. Actually, the client builders builders were already sorted, and the ordinal was used as a another layer to sort it more for some reason. I don't know. It, it they were trying to compare like if the two client builders are there with the same ID, like. Uh, no, with the same ordinal value, then the IDs will be compared. But it cannot; it is not possible, right? We cannot have same ordinal value. They will always have some difference. It, it may very well be overly complicated and or useless. I wouldn't be surprised if the original code had some flaws like that. But I haven't looked at it very closely. Anyway, if you if you think that it could be simplified, that seems fine to me. Okay, so can I remove that because I don't really find any use case for that. I guess. I mean, if it really is, yeah, if it really is over, if, if it really is pointless, then, then sure. Um, yeah, I haven't, like I said, I haven't looked at it too closely, but yeah, in general, if, if there's, if there's no reason to keep something, then, then it's fine to remove it. Okay. Then I'll, when I make the PR, then I'll write it on in, in the comment section so that you can uh, see through it. Maybe I missed something or something like that. I, that shouldn't happen. But still, okay. like, so yeah, the next thing is, uh, what was that? To build the GitLab API, like I what, what I was trying to do when I removed the version three was, I was trying to create the GitLab API instance in the GitLab connection itself. But now as we need the version three and version four, like some notion of the version three and version four in the code. So what I will be doing is I'll be using the uh, client builders like uh, in the auto detection client builder, what they did was they built the client using the client that was already uh, like the client was created in the GitLab plugin code base. But now we will be using the GitLab API. So what I will do is I will build the client using the GitLab API in the client builder itself. And the client will, because we have the URL and the token in the client, uh, in, in the client builders. So is that a, is that a correct approach according to you? Because I didn't really find anything flawed with it. Yeah, that's that's fine. Um, yeah, I mean, this is just details. It's just yeah. implementation details. But um, I you know, still if you wanted, wanted, to, if you wanted because... to, if you wanted to make it really elegant and keep the diff small, you could use the same class name as yeah, that's what you I'm had doing. before, like the the whatever it was called, the auto detecting client builder. But you know, instead of huh. instead of implementing that old interface that we don't need to implement anymore. It could, yeah, I'll it could just be, and... yeah, it could just be like a, a plain old Java class that returns the objects of 
of the of the GitLab API objects that we need. So no, it has yeah. to extend the GitLab builder client because we need to build the client, right? So it has to be extending that. But yeah, we don't need to implement those proxies and stuff like that. Right, that's right. That's right. I think you're on the right track. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm almost, but I'm still like I got underconfident after that, that PR. I wanted to check everything that. Like, Everything should be fine before I make the PR. I don't want to mess up. I don't have to waste my time. No, it's okay. It's okay. No, I, I think you're on the right track. So I actually wrote the code for it. Like I actually completed the code for uh, keeping the version three intact. And I, I was interactively testing it, but my GitLab got uh, stopped. So maybe I can screen share and uh, discuss the code with you before I make the PR. So that it doesn't get messy again. Okay. Sure. Let me, I'll stop screen sharing and you can start. I should be able to now. Oh, system settings and whatnot. Just wait a minute, guys. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. I have to quit and reopen Zoom, so I'll be joining the meeting again. Just okay. Wel welcome to Mac OS. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you should see how bad Linux is for any of this kind of stuff. Oh, oh, is it is it bad as well? I haven't I haven't run. I can't, I can't even use my uh, my Jabra headset with uh, Firefox oh, at all. Oh. But it works fine in Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, and that's that's one of those dark places where user interface devices are on 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 the various operating systems. What a black hole! I don't envy Microsoft or Apple or anybody who has to deal with. Oh, it's Bluetooth, except it's not quite Bluetooth, or it's it's almost Bluetooth. Does that count? I was yeah. talking to one of the developers at Oracle on Twitter about maintaining Solaris for new hardware. He said, "Luckily, it's a lot easier." to keep up with server hardware than it is with desktop hardware. I don't know. I've got I've got a son-in-law who does um, controller chips for disk drives and his world, yeah, uh, wow, that's already great. Super harsh, let's see. Oh, is, is it visible? Yes, it is. Yep. Yeah, so let me explain what, uh, what I have to do. Like Basil said about the cause data thing, like where is my... The beautiful review that I got. Uh, yeah, this exported thing you were having doubt related this. This is just a temporary change that I'm doing. Like the merge request thing that I did. This is very much temporary. Where is my cause data? No, it's it's a wrong file. Yeah, related to removal of this thing. Like it's a temporary thing that I'm doing when I'll be implementing the webhook thing, then I'll be separating out the cause data according to the events. And then I'll make sure that this thing is inside the merge request events cause data. This is just temporary just to make the plugin work. And we have to, and just to make sure that the step-by-step -step migration is taking place correctly. So I don't think so. There is much of a problem here. Yeah, that sounds right? fine. Uh, In that case, it would be... In that case, why don't we comment it out and put a to do that says this needs to be uncommented? Uh, the, plugin no, wait. Not, the plugin will not compile, right? Well, what I mean is, oh, oh, sorry. Uh, is our in order in order is the temporary code the deletion of this or the addition of it? Like it's deletion of this. Right, right. So since since we're deleting something that we that we want to eventually keep in the finished product. What my yeah. idea was is that instead of yeah. deleting it from the diff where we could you know, easily forget about it, we could comment it out instead. And that way it won't, oh, nice. it, it won't be considered yeah. part of the source code. And in that comment, we could also write a to-do that says something like, yeah. you know, figure out yeah. how to retain this in the future. Um, yeah. And the that's, only reason- That's a great idea. The only reason for doing that is so that we don't forget about it. Um, but also for for uh, other people who are reading this to understand more clearly that this is only being yeah. removed temporarily rather than permanently. Yeah. 
So I'll uh, write the comment about this, explaining this in the thing. And yeah, sorry about not explaining it. It was it was just a draft PR. That's why I did that. Like I was not expecting it. Sorry for that. You have to. Oh, yeah, I think the idea, the idea is we do want this to get merged into the project branch once you know, because like this is incremental progress towards getting the project completed. Yeah. So that, I mean, that's why I that's why I lowered the requirements for the project branch to reduce. Uh, you know, having to compile the tests, having to run the tests. Um, so the idea would be to get a clean build of this um, and, you know, actually merge it, merge the pull request into the project branch so that we can, you know, have some stable foundation that you can then build on top of in future changes. So uh, I'm not going to do anything with the draft PR. Like I'm going to make other PRs and smaller PRs. So that the review process gets easier, and I'll go, uh, and I'm going to close the PR, the draft PR that I made after the things are migrated and stable. Yeah, I mean once once the once these um, pull requests that target the project branch are merged into the project branch, you'll be able to file uh, additional pull requests that build on top of them. Yeah, um, and you know we. Um, you know, that way you can kind of work at your own pace, implementing pieces of this one at a time uh, and filing uh, you know, requests for review that are a lot more focused. Uh, that was the whole idea of having a project branch in the first place. You know, we, we can look at the overall state of progress by comparing the project branch to the main branch. And the idea is you know, eventually there's going to be no more to do comments left. You know, right now there's, yeah. there's there's at least the to do comment that I added, which is you know re-enable the tests. So that's that's an example of a to do comment that we we wouldn't uh, we wouldn't be able to merge this project branch back into the main branch as long as that to do comment was unaddressed, um, simply because we would never accept to have the main branch not do any testing. So it's the same you know the same idea. All of these to do comments. It's okay to put them into the project branch because uh, this is a whole work in progress. But we 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 know that we're done with the project and ready to integrate the project into the main branch once there's no more uh, to do comments left. Yeah, understood. So now in the GitLab connection, like as you said, I am completely keeping the auto editing GitLab client thing as it is. No changes at all. Like I'm not even changing the name. Like they're the same. And the connection thing is not having much changes now. L now the main meat lies in the implementation. Now what I did was in the auto rating GitLab client builder, I built the GitLab API instance directly in the build client by setting the ignore certificate and whatnot. And this this will be returning me directly like when the user is going to select the auto detect ID, and the ordinal is also kept as it is, and it's ex uh, and it's extending the GitLab client builder. Again, the version three and the version four also is doing the same thing. It's also extending the GitLab client builder and it is returning the client. I'll I'll show you, like I'll debug it also live, like so that we don't have any doubt related to this. And regarding the GitLab client builder, it does not really have much change. Like I was talking about this ordinal thing. Like you see, the it it's comparing like it cannot be zero because it's either zero, either one, or either two. So it will never be zero. When it's never be, when it's never zero, then it's always returning me the difference. And I don't think so. It's useful at all. Like it's never comparing the IDs at all. It's only returning me the difference. So yeah, it's it's if you, it's, I need if you to, could I need find to drink any use my, of it. I need to drink my cup of coffee before I can reason about Java ordinal calculations because I always <laughs> have to look up. What the uh, you know what the positive and negative numbers mean in in that API, but I, I'll check it over and see if see if I agree with uh, your evaluation of it. Like the rest uh, of this looks really see, good though. What you just showed me in the last few files was looking really good. Like you you can see here, it's already sorting the builders according to the IDs that it's just comparing. So I don't know. Let's see. Maybe I'm missing something. I got, I got a question though. Is like can we can we change yeah. it? From not zero to greater than one. Like, can you repeat? Uh, greater than or equal to one. So for not not zero, that's one the condition. 
Yeah, it's 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 actually the same. Like if the difference is non-zero, yeah. it's like it's it's kind of like um. But um, do do you think you want greater than one or equal to one? That case, would that make yeah, it's greater than one? Yeah. I I don't think one. so. Isn't the comp as Basel said? Isn't the compare to interface positives and negatives that not equal zero matters a bunch because it's it's saying are they exactly the same is ordinal exactly yeah. equal to other dot ordinal yeah, if, you, if you right click on compare to and go to um uh, go to the api docs for it if you click on right click on compare to and then select um or uh, i don't know if it's right click yeah um there you go if you go if you go back to that context menu and uh go and say go to um super implementation i think yeah uh, yeah, there's the Java doc for it. And if you scroll up and read this, yeah, it's like every time I look at this, I have to read this Java doc again because it's it's really not very intuitive. Okay. Okay, I need to work on my mathematics skills. No, like this is no, I, I was actually uh I was actually talking to one of the uh Google developers on Twitter and he was complaining about this. And this is someone who's like written the Guava library, who was complaining about this interface being you know, clumsy to and to, you know, to remember which positives and negatives mean which mean which semantics. So this is definitely something like, that a lot of people get confused about. Yeah, it's it's, it's normal. But uh, like, let me clear it uh, all at once. Like, uh, what this method is trying to do is it gets all the client builders and tries to see if the ID is like version three or version four equals to the client that it, that it has seen and it then returns the provider and it, we simply use the provider so it's just for, i don't know where this thing is even used this ordinal thing is it's not used anywhere so like we'll we'll see it afterwards other things these, well, these are the simple things like from India. I, I, yeah, I can answer this question with certainty in a day or two once i have some more time to read the yeah, code yeah, no, I, I don't think i can read it quickly enough in this meeting to come yeah, to yeah. any valuable I was, I was just explaining you my thoughts because I don't want you to, I don't want you to be confused afterwards. That's why I was doing that. No. Um, is it only used in the cloud builder for the no? Yeah, we are using the client builder uh, to build the client, right? To build the API, GitLab API that's, instance. I think that that's the only place that's using it though. So I I did a quick check. So... Yeah, you can do the quick check. Like, if, if you find something that you can ping me on the GitHub channel, I'll. Wait, be, yeah. like a REST easy GitLab client builder or the same one? No, we are uh, we are actually removing that REST easy GitLab yeah, yeah, client yeah. and REST easy GitLab I, I client mean, builder. What was was existing? Was an existing. Like, so yeah, that, but we won't two use cases for it. I don't think so. It is used in here. Like I read it all and it. Um, there's the there's proxy a thing 50 um, uh, 80 81 84 if you, if you go back to the uh the current main branch is it i think so yeah it's there it's there yeah but it's like no 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 you're actually not getting it right like he he used the ordinal thing but it's still not used in the implementation like it's good it's getting into its super and its super will be gitlab client builder and the GitLab plant builder would get the ordinal, but it, but it will not do anything with the ordinal thing. That's what I was showing you. It but is not doing anything it, with it. Yeah, but it, it, it seems like the intention was to use it in that compare to method, which is used when sorting yeah. the builders. So, but it seems like your your observation is that is that the uh, compare to is not implemented in a way that uses the ordinal correctly. Yeah. So that's some, that, yeah. that's something that I have to verify. Okay. Okay. So uh, let's move on to other things. Like the time is getting over. So. Okay. Uh, yeah, I discussed it also. This also. Attribute. Fine. Yeah, so the get merge request thing, like, let me show you where it is. 
the the merge the get and merge request that I removed from the cause data is here. Like it was used specifically. I uh, added the code for it in the classes that use it specifically so that we don't require that at that point of time. And related to other changes, I don't think so. There are any other major changes that I did. All seems to be working fine for me at least. Like I had one other blocker, but uh, anything else that you would like to see? Like, I don't think so. I have anything else. Everything oh. else seems to be working fine for me. No, this looks good so far. Have you, um, are, are you testing, sorry, are you testing this against uh, a Docker image of GitLab locally? Is that how you're um, making these connections? Yes, very much. Nice. Yes. And Harsh, and are you? I had the, yeah. No, go ahead. I'll, when you're, when you finish, I'll, I've got another question about, I about your testing. I had the production thing also. Yeah, please like, go ahead. So yeah, do you yeah. So I, yeah, Mark, go ahead. No, no, please. I'll let you finish. You, uh, I am going to distract you if I, if I go, go along the path I was going. So you finish and then I'll, I'll. Like check. I do interactive testing using the Docker images first and then the production thing, like the actual GitLab server. Like to, for faster testing, I use the GitLab server. And if some, if I have to test the version three or something, then I'll use the Docker instance as well. Like I think the version four was uh, implemented from GitLab version 13 or something. I, I'm not sure yet, but yeah. Yeah, go ahead, Mark. What's your problem? So one of the things that I'll want to be able to do is do similar kinds yeah. of testing to what you're doing. Do you have Jenkins job definitions or pipeline definitions that you're using to make your testing a little easier? And if you don't, do you object if I create those kind of things and put them someplace where I can share them? I I find yeah, that no problem. I I didn't really think about this, so it could be a really great idea, actually. Yeah. Well, I think you're probably just starting with clicking on that test connection button on the settings page, I would imagine, because that's the most basic test. Is that is that what you, yeah, that, is that what you started yeah. with or? Yeah, I, it almost always works. Like whenever I make it, migrate, things start working quite well. Like I'm not that bad at migration, actually. It works. Most nice. of the time it works. Nice. Well, that's, that's, that's a good so, first step. But yeah, like what Mark was, like, uh, as Mark was saying, um, once once we have a connection, the testing shifts from you know being able to connect at all to making sure that each of these endpoints was migrated correctly with the correct semantics. And the the best way to test those is is with a, an actual Jenkins job, because um, you know the, the the unit tests will cover a lot of it um, in a in a sort of mock yeah. environment with the server returning pre prepackaged data. Um, but there's really not no substitute for for end to end testing, especially of the very common uh, common endpoints. You know things like um, you know triggering a build when um, yeah. when the pull request gets updated. These are like really common use cases that we would want to test using a real Jenkins job, you know, pipeline job or a freestyle job, for example. Yeah, I I I have tested it using the freestyle job. Uh like the plugin that I'm using, I already migrated it and the version three and version four both are there. So I'm showing you to like debugging it right now. And because I faced one of the blockers uh, related to the, what was that called? Socket connection timeout, I guess. Yeah, like, uh, so I'll be showing you. Uh, where is it? Yeah, so I selected the auto detection, I guess. Yeah, that's why it is building the client using the auto detect ID. So I'll just step over all these things. Like this, just to show that it's working. It's mm -hmm. not like something problematic. It's working. Like it just returns the client successfully. And as the client was not, or the client ID was not already present in the client cache. So it just puts it in and returns the client case, client ID. It returns the connection map. Yada, yada, yada. Yeah, that's where the problem is. Like it gets the client for me. That's perfect, fine. Build status. Yep. The, the yeah, this is looking great. Problem. I mean, this is looking, you know, basically just what I was hoping for from after the last review that I did. So I think you've done a great job. Uh, no, it's it's not that great actually. Like 
let me show you what's the problem here. Now, when I come here, here comes the real problem. It's going to give me a GitLab API exception for some reason which I'm not able to understand. Like, I should not get it. Um, just uh, wait a minute. Did the machine slow down or something? No, this is because uh, attaching the debugger makes everything run more slowly. Right. Yeah, so yeah, it, it just hit there and it sent me socket connection timeout with the connection timeout timed out, which I couldn't really understand. How can the connection time out? I am not able to find any fault that I did in my migration. Like everything is working really fine. Like there is no problem. If I stop the debugger and just do the normal things that any user would do, everything will be fine. So the but way I, the way that I would debug this is um, yeah. what 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 your code is doing is making a uh, an HTTP request to a server, yeah. and when you're getting this socket timeout exception. It means yeah. that, uh, I mean, I, I'd have to look, can you show me the whole stack trace? But, but you know, what I would assume, um, if you if you expand the E in the uh, debugger, I should be able to see it. Um, yeah, there we, there we go. Can you expand the backtrace? Uh, how it's, to do that? Oh, backtrace uh, is a, is about middle of the block. Yeah, there you go. Oh, so this, yeah. Uh, yeah. Actually, that's oh, that's not what I was. Okay, no. I can't read that because it's all maybe bites, maybe but... stack trace. Yeah, stack trace. That's what I meant. <laughs> okay. So stack towards trace. the bottom it's of that here, block. Right? Whoops. Nope. You were in the in that in that e expansion that you were in, Harsh. Stack yeah, trace yeah, is this... the third from the bottom. Try that one. Okay. I heard backtrace. Yeah, yeah. No. No. You you heard me correctly. I just was thinking if they're wrong. Now, can you make that wider so that I can see the whole thing. Yeah, so yes, yeah, kind of what I was kind of what I was thinking. Where, where what's the um what's at the bottom of this? It should be, yeah, it should be or actually no, that's no, yeah, what's at the, the top problem, of this? Right? Okay, here we go. Yeah, this is kind of what I was thinking. So, it's just it's just not able to con it's it's if you navigate to element 0, you should see what uh yeah, if you click on the navigate button, you'll see what's what's where this is actually going wrong. There's there's a there's a navigate link I think right at the top, at the very right hand side, of, like next to line seven hundred. Word, navigate. Yeah, at the if you if you see that you're actually if you have it highlighted, but if you if you look at the highlighted line on the very right hand side of it, there's a navigate button. No, the no the highlighted um, stack trace line in the debugger. Word, navigate, see, see the highlighted line, navigate down, 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 down. down. stop, back up, 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 yeah, you, you're you now up, over up. the word yes, navigate, yes, try yes, that, yeah, so click on that, you should, yeah, if you click on that, it'll take you, so, um, you know, so you could actually, you know, put breakpoints in here and get, get more, um, you know, get more detail, but I don't need yeah. to see more, I can already see what's, what's happening, so, the the point is, you know, with the socket timeout is that um you know the the GitLab API attempted to make an outbound TCP connection to the address that you gave it and it couldn't connect. And you would be able to you'd be able to reproduce that uh, outside of Java by simply using the curl command and giving yeah. it the same uh you know the same arguments, the same URL and you know head or post and you know query parameters and body etc. Um, you you should be able to to reproduce that with with curl uh, even outside of Java. This has nothing to do with with Java. This is just a matter of not being able to make an H make not only not 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 only not being able to make an HTTP connection, but not being able to make any TCP connection at all to that address. Yeah. So. You know that whatever address you gave it, um, you know whether it's um, a local IP address or um, you know or maybe it's like a, a Docker host name that that you have or like a virtual machine. I don't know exactly how you have your GitLab server running on your on your machine, but it seems like for whatever reason um, you can't communicate with it from from uh, from the client. So, uh, you know, just because you can create that GitLab API object, that doesn't mean that it actually talked to the server. 
Um, and that's and that's actually what this auto negotiation thing does is that it actually does a, a really simple request from the server. I think it's like get current user, like who am I basically? Yeah. And uh, by doing, and so I don't think you're doing that yet because um, if you did that, it would give you the same error message as you're seeing here. Um, but yeah, I mean, for, for whatever reason, um, the, you know, the IP address that you've entered or the host name that you've entered is not routable um, from this uh, environment that you're running in to the GitLab server, whatever environment that's running in, you know, whether that's a, a Docker image or a virtual machine or, or otherwise. So, and, and like I said, you can debug that pretty easily. You don't you don't even need to debug it inside of Java. Um, you can you can debug it just by writing a curl command that uses the same address, and it should fail with the, the same the same timeout. And then once you fix the problem, uh, either by setting the the host name correctly or you know fixing your your networking or whatever, then um, you know then it should start working after that. So, so Basel, in terms of the the debugging technique, then if Harsh stops the debugger just before it makes the uh, the request, he can inspect the content of the request in the debugger and prep the arguments to curl to match right. that request. Yeah, exactly. Oh, exactly. Okay. That's what I was thinking. So, other yeah, than you that, might find I you think... might find that it's something as simple as uh, you know, as getting the um, the you know the the host name wrong or the IP address wrong or something. Are you are you trying to connect to um, where's the server that you're testing against? Is this the um, the, the GitLab.com hosted server? Yeah, I'm using that. Currently, I'm using that. So if it can't, I, yeah, I'm if not it can't, using. If it can't connect to that, then um, yeah, then uh, it, it we 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 would assume that the hosted GitLab service is deployed correctly. So if yeah. you can't connect to it, um, the most likely causes are that you're using the wrong address for some reason. Or yeah, that... I think so. That, like you pointed that out, I think so, because I'm not sure about the URL that I'm using. Like it, it is possible that in, I, I, I have to use the base URL, like the host URL instead of the URL that I'm using currently. So I have to check that because it I never really got into this trouble before. Like. When I when I remove the version three, then I use the base URL instead of the URL that the author has given. But but I created the base URL myself instead of using the URL that is specified in the plugins code base by the author himself. So maybe I can do that and it will start working again. But I just wanted to show you like the whole debugging process because like if something could be pointed out, like I was doing something wrong or something like that. So that's mm -hmm. why I did that. And the reason that it took you know ten seconds or whatever to uh... To fail is, is that uh, you know a TCP connection doesn't fail right away. You know it it sends it sends the request yeah. and it the the TCP stack will wait. You know I think it's like ten seconds or something like that before it times out. The same the same way that if you went to a website in your browser like you know I don't exist dot com or something, it would take it would take about ten seconds for that to fail as well. So. Oh, now we that's, that's the, actually handshake that's the explanation that it does. Okay, my Docker instance is running. Yep, it is. So I'm just going to show you that it works. Most like, why is it so slow again? Like, it's faster. <laughs> yeah, well, part of it, at least my experience has been when I'm screen sharing, my computer is just generally slower. Right. There's a there's a real price to be paid. There's a penalty to be paid when for sharing my screen. I it should start on yeah. That's 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 what I want. Like I'm not seeing any failure while I'm doing interactive testing, at least with version four. Let's see. Yeah. Anything else. Push it into something. It should give me a 500. No, sorry. What am I saying? It should not give me a 500. So, so Harsh, this site that you're on right now, 
that's yeah. gitlab.com right and it's yeah. trying to it's trying to send data to your computer i would have assumed your computer is blocked by a uh, what do you call it a, a a nat device a network attached a network translation device or like, something um, else that would not I, allow gitlab.com to reach to you but you've got ngrok or something else configured to allow it in yeah i ah. i did that like uh, it's right here okay it's in the middle actually like uh, that, that's okay you don't need to show it to me you, your answer is is great it says okay the the obvious things you've already handled this is it yeah yeah this is it okay thanks that's what i'm doing like otherwise it would not have been possible okay i'm getting some creepy errors yeah. why do i get some creepy errors when i'm doing some live demo that's bad It's all right. You don't need it's to. Uh, you don't need to do a live demo to satisfy me. No, uh, yeah. nor me, nor any of us. That's that's no problem. Otherwise, it uh, it was working. I don't know something happened in between. Like I'll I'll check what happened. This is kind of crazy. But yeah, that's fine. Uh, anything else that I needed to discuss? Like I discussed about the blocker. Yeah, regarding the docs, I already already conveyed to Chris. And yeah, everything I discussed. I don't think so. I need anything else. I'll work upon it and maybe I'll make the PR tomorrow. Like I'll try. I have some, like I'll have to test the responses. I don't know where it is. Yeah, those, the errors that I'm getting regarding the test is because of the responses that have not updated. So I'll have to do it. Otherwise, things are quite great. Like I don't think so. I have any problems. So anything that you would like to discuss more? No, this looks good so far. Yeah, Thank nothing you. else from me. This meeting went wild. Like, it's already 10.15. So I think it's time to stop. All right. Well, let's, I'll stop the recording then. And we'll, we'll, it'll be uploaded in probably an hour or two. Yep.